everybody. Thank you very much for joining the Lifecycle Institute today for our presentation, Maintenance Planners at the Center of It All. Before we get started, uh, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, you can use the Q&A panel there on the right-hand side. And if you have any technical issues or questions, feel free to send them directly to the Lifecycle Institute in the drop-down by the question pan, uh, the uh, Q&A pane, and we'll be sure to uh, get that taken care of for you. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Al Emmenecker, who is one of our maintenance planner and scheduling um, uh, subject matter experts. Good afternoon. Welcome. Those of you who know me know that I get a little bit long-winded, so just bear with me. I hope we'll finish up early enough to have time for some answers. The planner is the center of communication for pretty much all maintenance activities that are routine, proactive. Keep that in mind, routine and proactive. Which one of these our big arrows stands the best chance of going in the right direction? Which one most closely resembles your organization? I'm thinking I've got a good idea which one it is. This one is the one it really needs to be. Up here with the top one, we have an idea of where we want to go. But because of lack of communication, coordination, and cooperation, we kind of waller just a little bit. Down here, things are aligned, in focus. Everybody knows where they're going and what they're doing. It looks kind of like there's a misprint here with the little arrows coming out of the big arrow. Well, actually it is. But there's always opportunity. This, As I saw this, I, I was thinking about having it corrected, but if the little things are taken care of, they will get far out ahead of the big things, and the big things won't have any choice but to go along. So align your processes, align your people through good planning and scheduling. Interfaces and responsibilities. Operations owns the equipment. Maintenance owns the reliability of the equipment. It's operations responsibility to operate the equipment properly. They also need to be able to project future needs, just like changing the oil in your car. You know, as the operator and owner, how many miles you have on this last oil change. You know when you want to change the oil again. So you make that preparation. You anticipate that repair work. You maybe even go out and go so far as to make a reservation with your repair provider. Maintenance does the work for you. You bring it in, they tell them what's wrong, and they fix it for you. It's, it's a partnership between maintenance and operations to make that happen. The planner is in the middle of it with work orders. Work orders are the trigger to the entire organization's success. Does anybody in your organization talk about dollars or the lack thereof or how much we need to watch what we spend? We can do that with sound planning and scheduling. Planning and scheduling is the one of the or probably the major focal point of maintenance management. Remember I talked about just a few minutes ago about work orders. Work orders come from people. People see things that need to be done. So we capture that on a, on a request. Over here on the right-hand side, we've got the little funnel and the rain cloud of request. There's this little bar that says unapproved work request. Those are the things that have been identified that the equipment owner, operations, decides they don't need to do right now. The things that fall into the funnel are work, work requests that will become work orders that will be managed by the planner. That's the total backlog. That should be approximately four to six weeks. These are all the work orders in the system of work that has been identified to include preventive and predictive maintenance work orders. They are in work 
to, in some degree by the planner. The ready backlog here, this little two to four weeks part, are jobs that are on the backlog and ready to schedule. All the parts have been identified. All the crafts have been identified. Estimates have been made as far as craft utilization, how long it's going to take to do that job. To manage that backlog, our capacity, the throat of the funnel, trade resources, that's going to be our limiting factor. We want to manage the backlog four to six weeks, but our capacity, our tradespeople are going to be the limiting factor there. So we have to be judicious about what goes on to the backlog, things that are approved and, or rejected. The planner is the focal point. And you'll notice those arrows that are coming from all these big yellow blocks. They've got points on the end of them. I hope you will be able to surmise that the planner does not need to be thin-skinned. It's not personal. It's a job. The planners are going to have interface with all of these things, primarily work orders. Work orders are the key trigger to all maintenance activities that are planned and scheduled and proactive. They're going to talk to other planners. They're going to put out a schedule. They're going to interface with operations. They're going to work on shutdowns, long-term outages. They're going to find special tools and equipment. They're going to order the materials for the job. They're going to estimate how long it's going to take, realistically. Part of that estimating will consist of feedback from the craftspeople who have done these jobs before. Over on the right-hand side, you've got some choices to make. So select the top three planner roles and responsibilities. Your top three. What do you think the major top three primary roles and responsibilities of planners are? We want to go from proactive to reactive. So how do we do that with good planning and scheduling? And this foam around this kayak is a is is the foam off the North Pacific as it crashed around a big rock over here on the right hand side that's not in the picture. The swells were about ten feet and it was it was rather exciting uh, a few minutes ride on there. Everybody got their tops? Good. Looking good. So those things will help us become proactive, where everything is calm, everything is smooth. We know where we're going. We know what we're doing. And it's an easy trip. I think you can just guess that the paddling here was much more difficult than the paddling here. Now, let's talk about maintenance supervision. Pick out your top three roles, our top three functions of maintenance supervision. What do you think they need to concentrate most on? And while you're thinking, the supervisor should always expect the unexpected. Planning should cut down on the unexpected as much as possible, but the unexpected will never, ever go away. On the pic in the picture on the left, you see this little dot out here? That's a sea lion head. Sea lions are very unfriendly, inhospitable creatures. They do not make me happy, especially in big water like that. And that's me in the kayak. If you see this little swirl here beside the kayak, that's where this sea lion came over and basically did a somersault under my kayak. I don't know whether it wanted me out of the boat or just wanted the boat out of its territory, but uh, we got the boat out of the territory. Very 
very good. The feedback is excellent. Y'all are doing a great job. Okay, we're going to do some whiteboard stuff. The advantages of planned work. What, what in your opinion, is, are some of the advantages of planned work? Type those things out. Give us some suggestions. And to type, use the uh, above the slide, you'll see the letter T. Click on the T, and then click on the slide and begin typing your response, and then click your mouse again or press Enter to have your text visible. Saving time it takes to get the asset back online. Major savings there. Load leveling, very good. Proactive, safer, quality work. Approximately known cost of work, very good. That helps us manage the dollars that we have. And unless we're unless we got Congress helping us, we don't have unlimited funds. Less downtime. Reliable equipment. Tracking resources, cool. Reduce unplanned downtime. Which is worse, planned downtime or unplanned downtime? I think unplanned downtime is much, much worse. Okay. If it's planned, at least we can control it. If I do it in time, the Alps guys will let me get the asset when I need it. Credibility. Very good. Safer, lower cost, boost morale, cost efficiency. Meet, anticipate customer, customer demands. Consistent execution. Yeah, the supervisor doesn't yell. That's a good. That's a good one too. Yeah. <laughs> the planner is there to support supervision. The planner is also there to support the craftspeople. I've never met a craftsperson that wanted to do a lousy job. I've met many that were forced into doing a lousy job, less than quality job, because of the crisis of the moment. We let it become reactive instead of trying working to keep it proactive. By not putting in work requests, remember the funnel back there? Work requests become work orders, work orders become planned jobs, planned jobs become scheduled jobs, and we control the equipment. The equipment doesn't control us. Advantages of planned work. Work and workload management. We know what we're doing. We know when it's going to happen. We know what we need to have that work be successful. We know that we can schedule it at a time when it least impacts productivity. And we're after making product. The only reason we come to work in the morning or in the afternoon or midnight, which depending on which shift we're on, is to make product for the customer. That's why we're there. Better methods and procedures. As we get feedback from the existing jobs, planned jobs, feedback from competent craftspeople, we can make those jobs better next time. Because it is going to happen again. The planner is an aid to the supervisor. The planner is the staff support function. They want the supervisor's life to be without crisis. They want the craftspeople's life to be without crisis. All these things y'all mentioned in your in your white paper there, um, all those work toward increasing maintenance stature. Trust. Operations benefits from good planning by anticipating the work before it becomes an emergency. Do any of you just get in your car and drive without checking the gas gauge? Does it run out? Does your vehicle run out of fuel at the service station just in time? Right. We minimize downtime and interruptions because we plan these things. Operations should know the production schedule, so they should know the times when production is minimized. That would be the opportune time to take something down and fix it. 
Planning provides better service to operations, allowing them to prioritize the work. What is the most important to productivity? The planner's a single point of contact. Supervisors. With a planned backlog ready to work, we can develop a schedule for next week. That schedule allows a supervisor to determine who's going to do what. Who, who are the most qualified people to put on these particular jobs? Planned work has the parts ready, the equipment ready, the special tools ready, the part, the information, the schematics, the torque specifications, whatever is needed is there because it's planned. That allows the supervisor to devote closer attention to work execution, supporting their people once the job has started. Management benefits from redu reduction in total cost. As we plan these things and we get where we can schedule them and take them down at a time when we minimize production loss. Production loss means less money. If we minimize production loss, that means we've got more production and more money coming in. Accurate forecasting of materials and labor. What do we need when? For forecasting of, of the schedule, Four weeks out with a good CMMS or EAM set up with the proper PM, PDM program, the system will automatically populate about 30% of your resources for the four weeks out. Best practices, world class, about 30% of your resources are consumed with PM, PDM. Three weeks out, you add another 20% through communication, cooperation, and coordination with operations and maintenance, and you've got your schedule about 50% populated. Two weeks out, add another 25% through just routine chatting with folks, that communication stuff. Next week, we have a proposed schedule for maintenance, a proposed schedule for operations, and out of the scheduling meeting comes the schedule that we're going to do. This is the one we're working this week, 100%. We schedule all of our resources 100% of their time. Plan ahead and make sure you have the right tools. This was in secluded Alaska, southeast. Uh, there were 100, we paddled 140 miles and there were two towns. And a lot of, we saw more bears than people, which was a kind of kind of cool as long as the bears were on the shore and we were in the water. Uh, this yellow thing is, is a dry suit. The water temperature was about 40 degrees, so life expectancy in the water was not all that long, which is why we tried to be air on the safe side. We had extra paddles. We had fishing rods. We had everything we needed to survive. Planning ahead, we spent several weeks training, paddling, open water rescue, talking to people about the right tools that we needed to get back alive. It's the same way, the same thing the planner does on a routine basis. The weekly coordination meeting, where the schedule comes from, it's a face-to-face -face meeting. The planner is the coordinator, facilitator, along with the maintenance area supervisor and the operations area liaison. This operations area liaison is the person with the keys to the equipment. They have the authority to make, make a commitment for next week that, yes, Mr. Maintenance Guy, you can have this equipment at 9 o'clock Wednesday morning. It will be ready for you. That much authority. If environmental needs to be there, that's fine. If engineering needs to be there, that's fine. We just don't want to populate the meeting with a bunch of folks who really have no need to be there. The ready work order listing, the ready backlog, that's where operations chooses work to be done. The preliminary schedule, as maintenance sees it, those two come together in the scheduling meeting 
And out of that, we come up with a 100% resource-based schedule for that we're going to do next week. The planner puts that together. The maintenance supervisor and the operations supervisor choose which jobs are going to be done which day within that week. The planner doesn't do the daily assignment. The planner does a weekly assignment. Communication, coordination, cooperation. Maintenance planners, they're pretty much at the center of it all. And coming up in, a, in about a month or so, we've got an opportunity for some uh, subject matter expert and training expert talk going on here. Uh, we're going to have a webinar about training and, and subject matter experts. And it's up to the um, maintenance supervisor to be out supporting their people. And if they're out supporting their people, they're going to end up seeing a lot of things that could be trainable, where people could use some more information to get better. So keep looking for this next webinar coming up on training. Thanks so much, Al. If you have any questions, Use your, your chat uh, function there on the right-hand side, and we'll be sure to get them over to, to Al. We've got a little bit of time left to, to, take, to take some questions. While we take a look at that, wanted to highlight the upcoming events for uh, some of our open enrollment courses here in Charleston. I especially want to highlight the maintenance planning and scheduling, May 23rd through May 27th, because Al will be, will be teaching that, that course, so if you liked what you heard today. Be sure to sign up for the for that program. And as Al mentioned, next month we will be hosting our webinar uh, by Tara Denton, Training the New Workforce, SMEs and Learning Professionals Unite. There's one question. Okay, let's see. We do have a question in the queue. Would the planner be responsible for facilities? Yes. I had the opportunity to be facilities planner for about a million and a half square feet under roof uh, to include a an early 1800s antebellum mansion. It was more of a challenge than most industry can come up with. But yes, uh, planners can be very advantageous for facilities. Would you have KPIs to track ready backlog and total backlog, or is there one typically preferred? Yes, you do need to track your backlog to keep it within a manageable range, ready and total. Uh, if your ready backlog gets too low, you're scrambling to find something to do to keep your people busy. Uh, we, we want to keep them with as meaningful work as possible. Uh, people know when things are busy work, and that's not a good thing. We need we need to stretch the people. We need to allow them to be successful with their particular craft skills. Uh, do you have a point of view on dedicated maintenance teams? And by dedicated maintenance teams, I, I'm, I'm going to step out and assume that you're talking about specific craft teams uh, or within specific areas. The, the, more, the more focus we can keep our people, the better. Multi-craft is, is good. Typically, one aptitude is a little bit higher than other aptitudes in, in one skill. So bringing, bringing forth a, a partnership of, of people to allow quality repairs is, is probably where you want to go. Okay. Is there a good scheduling program for SAP instead of CM25? Richard, I don't. I honestly can't tell you. Um, the scheduling 
works. It, it's a matter of learning to read it. Uh, each one of the CMMSs or EAMs have their attributes. Uh, I would, I personally like to shy away from importing and exporting all over creation. That, that causes more trouble than it's really worth. How can you know the total backlog to be planned without the hours planned? Very good. Should there be a guess to how many hours before planning? Yes, as long as as soon as a work request is turned into a work order, the average planner can put in a reasonable estimate. And it's a guess um, because the job is still in planning, but it, it gives a a snapshot of, of the anticipated backlog. As the planner plans the job, that will be more finely tuned. Do you recommend a PM pit crew versus a regular maintenance group? What work, what's going to work best for your organization? I've, I've seen it both ways. Um, everybody's culture is a little bit different. Your people depending on how they work together and the regimented society that you may have in your organization. Um, find the one that works best for you and, and make it successful. It takes effort, but uh, talk to your people about how things might be better. Uh, how long is your boat? <laughs> the boat was 17 feet. The kayak was 17 feet. And when you're in 15-foot swells, it, it's a bit exciting to have bow wash, turn a wash. Uh, how do you plan craft resources for emergent work? Um, the planner does not get involved in emergency work as a general rule. Sometimes you have to throw the whole schedule out and everybody gets involved in it. But typically the planner is proactive, which is why we try to make the proactive work as easy and smooth as possible for the supervisor because the supervisor handles the tactical work, the emergency stuff, uh, the get it done now stuff. The planner does not unless there's an exist already existing job plan in the system in the labor library so that just with just a few keystrokes they can flip that over. What if you are in a company that they only want to allow emergency work? Um, what if you are in a company that they want they only want to allow emergency work? I would have to extend my sympathy to you on that. Uh, I, it's it's going to be crisis crisis management. Let's do one more. One more. My my timekeeper's putting it. Do you recommend overlapping maintenance crews with ops crews at the end or the beginning of the op shift? Might not be a bad idea. Communication, cooperation, and coordination. Unless somebody's trying to keep a secret, uh, the more communication we got, the better things are going to go. Everybody knows where everybody stands. People talking together typically make better partners. Thank you ever so much. It was a delight. Y'all have a great day. If you got any questions, holler at us. Thank you so much, Al. And if you have any questions, feel free to, uh, and any additional questions for Al, you can send them to education at lce.com, and we'll be happy to get those out to you. Thank you so much. Have a great day.